All right, folks, so I know that we're all feeling demoralized, and I think rightfully so. After last week's Iowa debacle, we're still putting up with nonstop media bias and attacks against Bernie Sanders, but I just want everyone to take a moment to stop and just breathe, relax, because we are at the very beginning of a very long and grueling process, and there are a lot more primaries to come. Iowa was just one of them, so I'll be talking more about the Iowa disaster in a separate video, but for now, I just want to put everything into perspective for everyone who's a Bernie Sanders supporter, because all of the hard work, all of the time that you put in is starting to pay off. Now, a lot of us were really worried about New Hampshire, and it's going to be close, right? We don't know what's going to happen at this time. I'm recording this on Monday. Um, we have no idea if it will be Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg. Currently, it seems as if Pete Buttigieg is in second place still, but Amy Klobuchar is eating into his lead after what I guess a lot of voters perceive to be a good debate performance. So, you know, we're going to have to stand Klobuchar for a bit, but I just want you all to realize that when you look at the betting odds, Bernie's winning. When you look at 538 projections, Bernie Sanders is best positioned to win the Democratic Party primary. And now he is emerging as the front runner. Because according to a new Quinnipiac poll, he has overtaken Joe Biden's lead. So Bernie Sanders is now at 25% nationally. That's a four point increase since January. And Joe Biden is now in second place. That is eight points behind Bernie and a nine point decrease since January. That is huge. And now we have Mike Bloomberg in third place nationally at 15%. That's a seven point jump. We'll talk about him later. And Elizabeth Warren is now sitting in fourth place at 14%. That's a one point drop. We have Pete Buttigieg with 10%. That's a four point increase since January. Amy Klobuchar at 4% nationally. That's a three point decrease since January. And Andrew Yang sitting at 2%, not making any movement since January. Now, as Ryan Stroig points out, when you look at the overall trend here with regard to Biden, Back in April of 2019, he was sitting, you know, really comfortably at 38%, but you see this gradual decline over the course of the year, and by December, he dropped to 30%, and now he's at 17% nationally, and looking at Real Clear Politics polling averages, you see a really sharp decline for Joe Biden, and Bernie Sanders is now just a fraction of a percent away from becoming the official national frontrunner. So this is huge. Bernie Sanders is about to take the lead. In fact, trends indicate that very soon, average polling data will show that he is the frontrunner, which means we're going to see an increase in attacks, which means that we could see, you know, a steeper hill to climb because you're going to see moderates coalesce around one candidate because if they're serious about beating Bernie Sanders, that's what they're going to have to do because they're kind of splitting the vote between Joe Biden, Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, and now possibly Mike Bloomberg. And as uh, Washington Post's notorious Bernie hater Jennifer Rubin asks, so who's the moderate to stop Bernie? And, you know, it's clear that she'll take anyone. And she's freaking out not just because Bernie Sanders is overtaking Joe Biden nationally, because, I mean, here's the thing about the national lead. What really matters the most are these individual primary states, and Bernie Sanders is projected to do very, very well on Super Tuesday. We're talking about winning most of those states, if not all of them. But, you know, I don't want to underestimate our opponents, but part of the main reason why Joe Biden is falling is because voters' perceived electability has decreased. They no longer view Joe Biden as someone who can beat Donald Trump. And that was a huge reason why I think his campaign was propped up for so long. So this Quinnipiac poll shows, according to Sahil Kapoor here, as he explains, Joe Biden's electability number has fallen by 17 points in the last two weeks. Let me repeat that for you. His perceived electability has dropped by 17 points in two weeks, according to this Quinnipiac poll. That is absolutely a colossal, colossal decline. Now, 27% of Democrats say that Joe Biden has the best chance at defeating Donald Trump. He's still at number one when it comes to this metric of electability, but he's down from 44%. Now, Sanders is in second place still technically at 24%, but he has increased by five points, and we have Bloomberg in third place at 17%. Although, note the increase. That's an eight-point increase. Everyone else is in single digits. So overall, voters believe that when it comes to electability, it's going to be between Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Mike Bloomberg in terms of who can best beat Donald Trump. 
Um, and it seems like Joe Biden's campaign, they're not really even projecting to do well in uh, New Hampshire at all. It kind of seems like they're banking everything on South Carolina, where Joe Biden technically still has a lead. Tom Steyer somehow has surged to second place in South Carolina, but we'll see how that turns out. If he doesn't perform well in South Carolina, that could very well be the end of his campaign. And by March 3rd, we're going to see this primary take shape. Now, I want to take a moment to focus on Mayor Bloomberg, because when you go back to that real clear politics polling average, you see Bernie Sanders rising. You see a little bit of a surge for Pete Buttigieg but you also see Bloomberg sharply increasing, and he's still far behind, but at this rate, he can catch up to Bernie Sanders within a month. And when you look at this graphic from CNN, you can see why he's doing so well. He is absolutely blowing the rest of the field out when it comes to campaign spending. And that Quinnipiac poll showed that when it comes to perceived electability, Bernie Sanders is in second place, but he had a five-point increase, whereas Mike Bloomberg had an eight-point increase. So the trend shows that Bernie is going to overtake Joe Biden as the front runner, nationally speaking, although Mayor, Mayor uh, Bloomberg could very well be the one to look out for. Now, the thing about Bloomberg is that he is a billionaire. Bernie would love to run against him. And progressives, we haven't even started to go in on Bloomberg, right? And once we do that, I am confident that we can drive down his support. But it shows us that his his strategy to just basically overwhelm the airwaves, it is it's successful, right? That's why people think that he has a chance against Donald Trump. And it's why I don't think progressives at this point in time should count him out. Yes, he's weak on the policy. Yes, he is the individual who implemented stop and frisk. It's a racist policy that disproportionately profiles black and brown people. Uh, but nonetheless, that money is what's going to make him possibly unstoppable. And I'm not saying that I think he has a good shot at winning the nomination, but what I am telling you is that the DNC favors him. And on top of that, uh, Mike Bloomberg is an individual that is going to be in this race until the convention if he feels like it, because when you have that much money, you don't have to worry about your campaign sputtering out. Like Joe Biden, a reason why you know there's a worry there is because you only have so much money. There's a finite amount of resources until you have to call it quits. Same with Amy Klobuchar, same with Elizabeth Warren, right? So Mike Bloomberg doesn't have to worry about that. He could stay in this race indefinitely. And part of the concern there is that just his presence alone may be enough to help him pick up quite a bit of pledged delegates because if moderates in this race really want to defeat Bernie Sanders, then all of Joe Biden and, you know, Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg's support may coalesce around Mike Bloomberg. But the good news is that Mike Bloomberg was really betting everything on Super Tuesday. He kind of skipped the first few primary states, right? Um, but currently, as it stands now, he doesn't really seem to be doing well. I mean, nationally speaking, he's rising. But what you have to do is win individual states if you want to get pledged delegates, which is how you secure the nomination. So what I will say is that if it's going to come down to a moderate and um, and Bernie Sanders, it's probably going to be Mike Bloomberg at this point in time. I mean, people would have judged sure had a bump after Iowa, but he has no real path to the nomination at this point in time as I record this video. He has no support with young people. He can't get the support from black people and Latino voters, and he's not doing anything to really change that. Like, he... His campaign tried to arrest someone for handing out Medicare for All flyers. He's now talking about deficit reduction. He's not... <laughs> I mean, this is not going to help you win the nomination. And I get what he wants to do. Like, he wants moderate voters to coalesce around him. But this isn't going to help you, even with moderate voters, right? So, at this point in time, I mean, Mike Bloomberg, he has no reason to exit the race. He's not going to run out of funds. He's self-financing his campaign. And Bernie Sanders also has that momentum from the grassroots to carry him. So regardless if, you know, Mike Bloomberg is mathematically eliminated, he can pick up some delegates if all the moderates wise up and they coalesce behind him. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. But progressives may have to um, gear up to take on Mike Bloomberg. Because when you have that much money, I mean, and you have the institutions, the Democratic Party apparatus, the DNC kind of like going to bat for you, uh, placing your surrogates on the Rules Committee... We do have to be worried there, but let's just take this, you know, one step at a time and let's reflect on everything that we've done. Bernie's basically going to become the front runner. And it's because 
you have been doing this, and we've got a great shot to win the nomination, but um, we can't underestimate our opponents, and we've got to fight like hell to make sure that that is in fact the case, and we've got New Hampshire tomorrow. So let's do everything in our power to make sure that he's victorious. Let's make calls for Bernie Sanders. Let's fight like hell. And um, let's just uh, let's just try to breathe a little bit easier, knowing that this is only the beginning and we can't get demoralized this early. We can't get too uh, discouraged based off of that Iowa debacle because we can't afford to at this point. It's going to be a long process, so let's uh, buckle up.